Larry? You want... Just say who you are. Okay. Uh, I just have a quick question. Just say who you are. Oh, uh, Larry Hinman from the University of San Diego. Uh, I have a quick question for both the panelists, and that is, it seems like one of the dangers in a discussion such as this is that we see, we compare the best of science with the worst of religion. You know, and I'm concerned that, that some of that happened earlier today. And I think particularly when we talk about best, it can be in either of two senses, e either an epistemic sense, that is getting the story right, you know, um, or it can be in a moral sense. And I think some of the, um, the strongest force of Sam Harris's comments this morning, at least to me, came about from his deep moral concern about the possible damage that, that this uh, commitment to religion could have. But it seems as though science, too, you're pointing out in part, I think, the, the uh, dark epistemic side, perhaps, but, but it also has its own dark moral side. And it would seem like any discussion of these would have to look at both dimensions in both religion and science. And so if you have any comments. Should I go? Yes. Um, well, that's actually this, uh, the sense in which I'm concerned with the view of nature that's um, implicit in the... Um, or explicit in the in the sexual selection narrative because it's a view of uh, social conflict as uh, basic as fun as human nature and as biological nature and if that's true fine so be it but uh, we haven't had a class of hypotheses on the table um, uh, to challenge that and uh, because to do so actually does unfortunately trace back to Darwin and it's not, I think, uh, socially acceptable um, to be uh, skeptical of uh, Darwin in that regard. But that's what a lot of people are pointing out: is that that there is there that from this worldview uh, comes um, a sense of ethics. It informs ethics, even if it's not value in and of itself. And uh, and I think we do uh, have to uh, worry about the moral implications of it, of uh, of scientific research, and I, I thank you for the question. Do you have a thought on that, Richard? But, well, I, I worry about the, the prioritizing of putting the emotional, poetic, moral implications of science ahead of the science itself. I mean, I, I don't actually care whether, it's, whether it fosters a locker room mentality or whether it fosters whether it's about conflict or cooperation. I care whether it's true. And to, to take the particular example of the gene or the, or the individual as the unit of, of selection, um, I don't want to approach that question by saying what is best for human society, um, what, is, what gives the best moral lessons for humanity. I, I want to approach it from the point of view of how Darwinian theory works. And so I want to say something like, in natural selection, what are the units that actually survive or fail to survive? Individuals are not that, because individuals, at least in sexual um, species, um, only exist in one copy each, and so individuals are not the sort of things you can count the frequency of. They're not the sort of things that, whose frequency changes as generations go by. Genes are um, natural selection, ev evolution by natural selection, or indeed evolution period, consists of changing gene frequencies manifested in changing um, phenotypes in populations, and the gene frequencies change as a consequence of the survival or failure to survive, the reproduction or failure to reproduce of um, individuals that contain those genes. To the extent that male bodies and female bodies have different optimal ways of doing things, you're going to get particular male and female um, expectations. Um, this is all um, scientific theory. It may be wrong, uh, but, it's, but it's science. We, we don't judge it by, by criteria such as, is it a, um, a, a, a nasty, ruthless, unpleasant view of the world? Or, I mean, wouldn't we all feel better if we had a nice, cooperative, friendly, unselfish view of the world? Well, maybe we would, but what matters is what's true, not what makes us feel good. Yeah, but there's no disagreement on that point. The question is whether or not, as I mentioned earlier, the hypotheses that are on the table 
explore the space of four possible hypotheses very effectively. And this is where uh, the sociology of the science comes in because there's uh, an, um, a non-random generation of hypotheses to span the hypothesis space. And the hypotheses that are generated have a, a history and a connection and, and a connection with power and so forth. And uh, so I agree with you that if, if nature is red tooth and claw, if that's the fact of the matter, fine. But um, has that actually been tested? Okay, so so I, I understand you to be saying that um, if that is the fact of the matter, then when we, they'll have to live with that. But, but, the, because, but the, the effect of these political biases that you're talking about yeah. is to restrict the range of hypotheses that we examine yes. um, rather than to pre, prejudge what we're going to end up. Yeah. Feeling is yeah. true. Nicely well, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, nicely put. Pat, do you have anything? Yeah, I was sort of taken with both, uh, both talks, perhaps in, in contrast to Francisco. Um, and it did occur to me that we do actually have an example of someone with um, both a religious perspective and with religious power on the one hand, but someone who wants to be scientifically accurate and not just a teaspoon of sugar makes the medicine go down, and that's the Dalai Lama. Um, and it seems that he is genuinely interested in what the science actually says and doesn't want to soften it down. Uh, wants to have an accurate story and a, the most up-to-date story both with regard to molecular biology but certainly with regard to the brain. And his curiosity about this I think is really very interesting. Um, it also seems to me, having been in one of these sort of tutorial sessions with him, that the metaphysical baggage that he brings to bear is really very, very minimal, and uh, to the degree that it's there, it's pretty darn hard to see, or at least in the sense that he doesn't sort of foist it on you. What they do emphasize, on the other hand, is, and I think this is something that Joan is worried about, and it was something that, that Steve Weinberg was worried about, and that is the sense of community, the, the sense of belonging to a group that is not always easy in a very large country or in a very large city, where people can share things, talk about problems, and so forth, and, and typically religions do provide a certain amount of that. The other part of the story does have to do with ethics, but again, it's a kind of ethics that doesn't talk about rules and it doesn't talk about laws. It talks about acquiring certain virtues and certain skills for navigating the social world where the specific form that that might take uh, would depend on the nature of the conditions. What I'd love to see is that the Pope, for example, were will as willing, even half as willing, as the Dalai Lama to learn the science and to change his mind accordingly. And, and, and perhaps it would be great if the Episcopal, I don't know what they are, uh, bishop or top, top gun, uh, were to do the same thing and, and to, to, to emulate the, the position that the Dalai Lama has taken so that you emphasize what's important to people, namely community, learning to live a good life, meditating so that you are peaceful and not anxious and all those good things, and leave the metaphysics aside. Um, I guess I could say that the uh, new presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church here in the U.S. was just uh, um, ordained, or whatever the phrase is, this morning, and her back, she's a scientist, and uh, she was an oceanographer, and I looked up her publications uh, for, for the time when she was active in science, and she was an expert on planktonic cephalopods from the uh, California current near uh, the Washington-Oregon border. So it's <laughs> highly specific but it, it's in, in highly taxonomic, but nonetheless, she, she definitely is a scientist. So it remains to be seen uh, whether or not um, this provides, um, uh, whether this will lead to um, study groups or uh, um, new forms of dialogue between uh, re religious communities and scientists, I, I certainly hope so. I think what the, one of the points that Pat was making though is uh, sadly um, a couple of the people that were supposed to be here today, um, Richie Davidson, 
um, is, has um, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, who did a lot of the work on fMRI um, of meditative states of the Dalai Lama's monks from Namgyal Monastery. Um, can't be here with us today because he's got a, a this prospective donor there and um, has got to go and do a presentation. <laughs> um, Paul Ekman uh, would have been here today, but his wife has been um, ill, so he can't be with us. Um, but I, I think that this point of uh, Pat's is correct, that, that we should, I mean, the fMRI work that, that has been being done by, by Richard Davis and other people is, is really very interesting and very instructive. And I think, you know, I've often said it's the neuroscience stupid. Uh, if we start understanding a bit more of that, I think we'll have some better answers to some of these some of these, these vexing issues, uh, and, and perhaps the problems will be, will be less problematic. Um, Sam, do you want to say something? Since you are... Did you want to come on down here? Got a mic for him here. Sam? Sam? See, this is the director of the Hayden Planetarium, who does this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> He's got something to say himself, by the way. What? He's got something to say Thank himself. You. Neil, yes, I know. Well, why don't you both come down here? That'd be much easier, if you, if you don't mind. Us both? Yes. Because I think you both had responses to this. I did have responses, but it's, I mean, it's his turn. Well, it's all right. You can just leave the mic up there. And okay. Come on down. <laughs> okay, I can hand him the mic. That's fine. Are you jet lagged? Just take a chair. Take a seat. I'll take the mic. Uh, 